Hello everybody, this is Mark Weitzman and welcome to my YouTube channel. Um, the video today I'm going to um, continue my popular list on books for physicists and so I'm going to do um, start with technology books today. I think I'll make several books because there are so many books on technology that I've read. All these books I've, um, I own and I've read and there are many, many more that I haven't, so this is just a sample of some of the books that I um, particularly enjoyed, or at least I read. can't say I enjoyed all of them. So the first book is a classic, The Making of the Atomic Bomb by Richard Rhodes. It's a history of uh, nuclear weapons and the Manhattan Project, and it's just, a, it's just a fantastic read. He followed it up with a book called uh, Dark Sun on the Hydrogen Bomb and everything, but We'll start with this one. The books that I'm starting with are sort of um, classic books and um, books that I really enjoyed, so there's no particular order to them. Um, next book that was a fantastic book, it was published quite a while ago, was on the Code Breakers. It's a complete history of cryptography. I mean, it might not cover the modern methods of cryptography as much as the old ones did. I don't know where the author left off, but it just covers everything from those old cipher codes and substitution codes and how they were broken and what the consequences were and everything. It's a, it's a large book. It's about a thousand pages, but it is a, a fascinating read. Um, another, uh, oops, it's not coming up here. Let me see if I can come back to it. Anyway, another really, um, a book that was originally published in several parts in the New Yorker. It's by a fantastic author who I think just passed away a year or two ago. He wrote like over probably 100 books in his lifetime. Anyway, it's called The Curve of Binding Energy. And it talks and it follows the uh, this physicist Theodore B. Taylor who worked on weapons and everything. And it really is an amazing read. I'm going to see if I can get this again. Okay, here it is. This is a book, um, another classic book about the oil and oil industry and the whole history of it. It's by a renowned expert, Daniel Jurgen, on, on the field. It's called The Prize. And uh, this book isn't so much, the next book isn't so much on technology, but it's related to it. It's a classic book. It was written a long, long, long time ago. So it's not really that relevant today, but it was called The Puzzle Palace, and it was on the National Intelligence Agency. Um, now, the, uh, the next book I have is called Project Orion, and um, it's written by the son of Freeman Dyson. And um, this was just a fantastic um, story about how in the early 60s, people were seriously thinking of building spaceships which would be propelled by blasts of nuclear weapons. They were actually going to set off a series of nuclear bombs underneath like these very hard metal plates. And it's, you have to read the book to believe it. Uh, and it's, uh, it's true, true story. Uh, the next book was made into a movie. I think it's called October Sky. It's by, called Rocket Boys. And it was by this guy who grew up in a small town but ended up being, a, I think, a, a rocket designer on the Saturn V project and everything. Anyway, it's a really nice read, and um, it's more than just about rockets, though. Uh, another real excellent book memoir from, like, early in the space race, Michael Collins was the guy who didn't land on the moon. He was the guy orbiting in the command module above. And he wrote this uh, well-regarded history of uh, his uh, experience, and it's called Carrying the Fire. Another book from the uh, 80s, like at the start of the computer age, when they were just designing all these mini-computers and micro-computers and everything, fantastic read by Tracy Kidder, another prolific author, and it's called The Soul of a New Machine. Okay, and, um, 
this book is more in my um, endeavor. It's called the uh, you I can't even pronounce it Eucadomic Pi, and it was about how a bunch of physicists from the University of California Santa Cruz were able to um, design a machine to beat roulette. You know, and um, and it actually I happen to know a personal gambler who used it for a while, and they made money. But eventually the casinos got wise. But this is a fantastic book on physicists and roulette and chaos and all kinds of things. Um, another uh, very interesting book was about hackers and all the whole hacking revolution of a classic book written by Steve Levy and how this is how the original hackers started. Um, finally, the last of my uh, classic books is a book on the mythical man month. I think this was written on like in the 60s or something, but it, it was one of the first books that pointed out that adding 10 people to a project, to a software project, probably means it will take 10 times as long. Just get a couple of good people to code and you'll be okay. When you keep adding people, it, it doesn't work out. Before that, people just threw uh, manpower at software problems with bad results. Um, so now I'd like to proceed to just some general books on technology and um, related areas. And if you're interested in the history, I think there's a second edition of this book, but there's the Norton History of Technology. It's kind of like a dry read, but it does cover a lot of technologies and the history of it. There's a book written by uh, Richard Rhodes again, I think, on energy, a history of energy. So if you're interested in the history of how we go from, you know, wood to coal to oil to nuclear power. This book has it. Um, and then James Gleick, the famous author who wrote the book on chaos, he wrote a book about the information, titled it The Information. Um, doesn't have any reviews on this page. I should have had a different page. Hold on. Let me try the paperback. Um... Okay. Anyway, it's about what it says, information and, and um, computers and everything. There's a book, um, this is sort of for those engineers, to engineer as human, the role of failure in successful design. I think this guy's a pretty famous author and engineer himself. And um, so this is a very interesting book on failures and things. Um, then there's a book on flying buttresses, entropy, and O-rings, the world of an engineer. You know, I'm a physicist, so I don't know. I'm not a physicist. I wanna, I'm a wannabe theoretical physicist. And I don't know anything about, you know, engineering, but books like this, I've tried to learn a little bit about it. Same thing in a similar book called uh, Structures, the way things are built. These aren't the most exciting books in the world, but if you don't know anything about engineering, stuff might these books might help you. There's a book called Stuff, the things that worlds are made of that describe all kinds of materials. Now the next few books, like um, this book is a book on, um, they're both about MIT, about how ideas, you know, there was a whole corridor at MIT and how all these ideas came together. This is one of them. The next book is also about MIT, but it's, and it's actually called Up the Infinite Corridor. So um, these are books, you know, give you an idea of what goes on at MIT, especially in the engineering departments. Another famous scientist wrote a book called Being Digital. Um, it's about uh, all these aspects, and he's he's well known uh, expert on it. There's a book I read a few years ago called Traffic, which was quite interesting about driving and all kinds of things involved with traffic. And um, then there's another book I have, and this is the last of my general books on the scientific image. And it's uh, really interesting. It shows all these ways to show things and the history of images and charts and illustrations and diagrams. Um, the next, 
set of books that I have, which I'll finish this video today, is on specific technologies. So this book on tube covers the invention of television. Um, this next book called Crystal Fire, The Birth of the Information Age, is basically on the transistor. And a lot of these books, there's a Sloan um, series on technology. So a few of these books are in that series. And then there's a book, um, The Invention That Changed the World on Radar. Um, another book by a Nobel Prize winner, the guy who actually discovered it, is How to Laser Happened, Adventures of a Scientist. Another book on um, the photocopies and Xerox, how that all came together. It's an interesting technology. It's more... Uh, more interesting than you might think. And then there's um, a book on fiber optics, again in the Sloan Technology series. And then there's a book on, um, you know, the beginning of the, of the uh, personal computer age, you know, and Xerox Park and how Steve Jobs got that stuff and started Apple. Another book here on um, architects of the web, you know, people who designed the internet. Um, and then uh, here's a book, might not be that available. I guess it's still available. It's on the superconductivity breakthrough that happened in 1988, high temperature superconductors. And then here's a book on. Um, satellites, these the small companies that lost uh, launched satellites and how they get started and everything. And then um, I'll end the video today. This is a old book, but it's a very interesting book on how the uh, transatlantic cable was first laid and all the problems they had and everything. So I highly recommend this book. Now um, this will be the end of part one. In um, part two, I'm going to cover um, atomic and nuclear weapons, space technology, and um, military technology. And then on the last part, I'll cover books on um, hacking and cryptography, software and computers, and artificial intelligence, and finally some books on Silicon Valley. So I'm making this, these videos a little shorter and um, make it easy for you to go back and find a book. And so this will probably be a three-part uh, video. Anyway, thank you for watching. I'll uh, see you next time in part two. Bye-bye.